Welcome to video number 29 in the Using iTrain tutorial series. My name is Bob. Welcome back. We saw in the last tutorial that stations are the key component for automatic routing without a route. So in this tutorial we will create our first station. As usual it is a two-step process. We first create the station element, which is the visual component that we see on the switchboard, and then we create the station object, the functional component where the properties of the station are specified. The user manual says that a station is a destination where trains can stop and it contains a set of blocks which belong together. Perhaps a more complete definition would be to say that a station is a destination where a train goes to and from and where it can stop, wait or pass through. So on our layout here, we need to decide the areas where we want our stations to be located. But how do we decide where to place them? For me, the term station can be a little misleading. For example, I immediately think of a station as a place where a train stops to pick up passengers, in other words, a train station. But in iTrain, a station is used for more than just a passenger stop. It is used at any location where we want a train to make a regular stop or where we want a train to pass through. That could be a train station for passengers. It could be a goods shed or an industry to drop off and pick up cargo. It could be a train shed to perform maintenance. Or, for example, it could be a yard to store our trains. So anywhere where we want our train to stop for a specific purpose. We would not put a station everywhere where a signal is located, for example. A station is not used to mark the place where a train stops for a signal. So primarily, a station is a place where a train stops or waits for a purpose. But we can also use a station as a virtual station which is used as a navigation point where the train simply passes through. We can use these virtual stations to encourage iTrain to take a specific path through the layout, but not necessarily as a place to stop. So if we look at our test layout here, the most obvious locations for our stations would be the North Platform, the Loop Station, the South Platforms, the South Siding and the Down Under Platforms. Locations for the Virtual Stations might be the East Block or the West Block for example places where the train will not be stopping and would only be used as a navigation point. But on a small layout like this, virtual stations are of limited use. Having decided the location, we may then need to decide if each of those locations need to be one station which includes all the blocks in that location, or if we want to divide it into more than one station to perform a particular task. 
but more on that in later tutorials when we consider our overall plan for the layout and the tasks that will be performed at each of the locations or each of the stations. For this tutorial, we will simply focus on the basic creation and definition of a station. And for that purpose, we will use the North platforms as the location of our first station. So to draw our station, we need to go to the switchboard editor. We select the station element by clicking on it in the toolbar on the right here. If you don't see the station element in your toolbar, right click on it and then make sure all of these options are ticked. To draw a station, we simply highlight an area that includes the blocks that we want to be included in the station. The size of the area that we draw is not important so long as it covers only the block symbols that we want included and doesn't include unwanted block symbols. It doesn't matter if the area includes turnouts or sections of track from another block. They serve no operational importance for defining the station. When we are happy with the area that we have covered, we can either use the shortcut key command of Shift plus S, or we make sure that the station element is selected in the toolbar and press the space bar, or we simply just double click on the station element here. A dashed line is then drawn on the switchboard. If we want to redraw the station element, we can delete it by simply clicking on a free space within the dashed line and then pressing the delete key. Now this action only deletes the station element. It does not delete the station object that would be listed in the browser under the station tab if we had previously created a station object. We haven't created a station object yet so nothing is listed. So all we have done so far is to create the station element which creates the dashed line that surrounds the block symbols that we want to be included in the station object. As we will see later, we can add and remove blocks from the station object. So if the dashed line does not include blocks that are needed or has blocks that we do not need, we can add and delete them later manually. The dashed line just identifies the blocks that will be auto-filled when the station object is created. To create the station object, we simply double-click on a free square within the dashed line and then the station properties window is displayed. As usual, the first thing we must do is give it a name and we will give it the name North. And we can give it an optional description of North Station and in brackets N1 and N2. With the blocks tab selected, we can see that the two blocks have automatically been included. And the board item tab provides a pictorial view of the station. To save the station, we just click on the OK button. 
and the station now appears in the browser under the stations tab. As mentioned earlier, the station object is not deleted by simply deleting the dashed line in the switchboard. To completely delete a whole station, we need to delete the station element by clicking on a free space within the dashed area and then pressing the delete key. And then in the browser, we right click on the station object and select the delete option or we click on the station object to select it and then press the delete key. Now the station is completely removed and I'll quickly recreate it all by highlighting it, double clicking on it, double click in here to bring up the properties menu, type in north and press OK. Now there's a little quirk that I want to show you. I mentioned earlier that we can add and remove blocks manually. To do that we double click on the station element to bring up the properties editor and we select the blocks tab. Deleting a block is easy enough. We just click on it and press the remove key. But adding a block using this particular station properties window isn't quite what we might expect. We have the usual insert and append buttons to add a block, but in the blocks menu only N1 and N2 are available to choose from. None of the other blocks from the layout are shown. This is because we opened the station properties window by double clicking in the station element and this opens a property window that is only relevant to the dashed line zone. And notice that this properties window includes this auto fill button here. More on that in a later tutorial. To get a station properties editor that has all the blocks available for us to choose from, we need to open it using the station properties in the browser here. So we close this editor we come up to the station in the browser, right click on it and select properties or press the spacebar. Now we have a station properties that doesn't include the auto fill button and when we press on the blocks menu we can see that we have all the blocks available to choose from. OK, so that's all for this tutorial. We've seen how to create the station element and the station object. In the next tutorial, we'll look at the station types and explain its purpose. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.